Who are you under there? I'm vengeance. With the Batman barreling its way into theaters, Bat fans have a brand new Bat suit to obsess over, so we're sorting through all of the movie Bat suits and ranking them from awful to awesome while considering many key factors, from nipples to neck mobility. The IGN Entertainment team voted on our favorite Bat suits, focusing on both form and function. But first, a real quick note. We're only including the live action movie suits so you Batman Beyond fans can go find a different video listicle. Whatever, let's get to those suits and see which one best aids the Dark Knight in his quest to beat the snot out of people who are almost always a lot poorer than he is. Take it away, Bruce. Maybe he melted. No, he's just hibernating. Let's kick some ice. The Batman films directed by Joel Schumacher both had two bat suits each strictly on the basis of toy sales, but the alternate attire in Batman and Robin were impervious to ice-based attacks and resistant to good taste, apparently. What do you suggest, Alfred? The Riddler destroys most of Bruce's alternate bat suits in Batman Forever, so Bruce uses his last remaining suit in the film's final fight, the sonar suit. A kind of plain looking silvery black getup that was actually probably the very last thing Bruce had in his closet. But I mean, at least it didn't have nipples. And speaking of nipples, the Batman and Robin main suit kind of blended both Batman Forever suits. George Clooney's main bat suit featured some metallic nipples for an overall result that most of us resent because George Clooney was a bad Batman in a bad movie. In Batman vs Superman's ruined dystopian dreamscape ruled by an evil Superman, Batman threw a hat on a hat by adding goggles in a trench coat on top of his DCEU Batsuit. Oh also, guns. Before Batman and Superman realized the most world shattering coincidence in the history of everything, save Martha. Bruce geared up in the powered Batsuit exoskeleton inspired by the armored suit in Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. This chonky costume made Bruce just strong enough to find out what normal people might find out in just regular conversation. Why did you say that name? It's his mother's name. Or oh, moms have the same name. That's cool. With upgraded armor, weapons, and flight goggles that he actually wears, Bruce's upgraded Justice League gear was peak bat tech. Used in the fight against Steppenwolf and his parademon minions, the tactical suit was less of the bulky tank that was the armored suit, and it looked great in that final battle against the otherworldly invaders. Damn! This isn't the plan. The original nipple suit. Batman Forever director Joel Schumacher was inspired by the statues of ancient Greece, or that's how the story goes. The main Forever suit also made some graceful alterations to the Tim Burton designs, including a muted chest symbol and a new utility belt. Influenced by the classic black and gray suit from the comics and Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns, the main Affleck DCEU suit is no-nonsense wardrobe for the war on crime. This suit is ideal for hiding in the shadows until it's the right time to bust in and devastate some fools and maybe even brand them if there's time. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. Adam West sure had some groovy gear to work with in his campy 60s turn as the Caped Crusader. With that satin blue and purple suit sporting a cow with smaller ears and shorter capes so West wouldn't trip on it. In Batman Returns, Bruce has been so focused on being vengeance and also the knight that he now has a Batcave vault full of alternate suits. The main Returns suit sports subtle changes to the Batman 89 suit, sleeker and less sculpted with a functional gliding cape. Batman Begins took a grounded and gritty approach to the character, and his first suit reverse engineers how someone might actually try to build a real bat suit. The Nomex and Kevlar battle suit with memory cloth cape was the first bat suit fans got to see put together from scratch. What are you? I'm Batman. Sinister and shadowy, the first bolted up all black suit, the Batman 89 suit, had the big yellow emblem and no neck mobility. Not the most functional, but definitely the most iconic. This suit has influenced every movie bat suit since. Faster, more agile. Perhaps you should read the instructions first. 
Sacrificing bulky protection for mobility and agility, Lucius Fox whipped up a new suit for Bruce using separated plates, and the Dark Knight suit was born. Sleek and slimming, this suit was perfect for facing off against the Joker, but less so when Batman fought Bane some years later. <laughs> Honorable mention has to go to the bad suit of the 1940s live action serials, where actor Lewis Wilson played the Cape Crusader in the very first movie bat suit. And that brings us to Robert Pattinson's bat suit, or pat suit, if you will. Once again, Bats is wearing all black, and the suit seems pretty grounded in its design. Where do you rank the pat suit, and what do you think of this list? Let us know what you think down in the comments. Anyway, thanks for watching, and for more on the Batman, check out how this version of the Cape Crusader can be even darker. And don't forget to follow and subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch. Watch. Right. Ah.